Good Saturday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, just past the top of the 8 a.m. hour. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a complete update of your forecast as we head into the bulk of the weekend, the last weekend of January 2018. And so far, again, things are decently quiet for the time being, but we do have, again, more chances of some shall we say, interesting weather coming our direction as we go toward, again, the end of this next week. Approaching the beginning of February, we could be seeing some more winter weather heading our way. Doesn't look impressive for right now, got to say that much, but again, we're still several days away from this, so we could be seeing a lot of changes into the course of the next couple of days. Traveling this morning, we'll take a look at some of the webcams around the area. It's soggy, it's breezy, and we'll continue to see the chances of rain pretty much throughout the entire rest of Saturday. Sunday is looking a little bit better. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up here in just a little bit, so stick around for more on that with News Channel 3. Of course, if you haven't joined us before, welcome to Weather Overtime. This is our online video weather blog exclusive video weather blog and if you'd like to know more about what's going on here if you can't stick around for the whole forecast bottom of the screen that blue bar down there that's where you can see the whole forecast scrolling on by We've got our let's see which way am I pointing see seven day forecast right there and again you can catch that at this website wreg.com slash weather and if you'd like to contact me about something you'd like to see on here uh, glad to have you along for the ride and whatever it is you, again, would like to uh, suggest as an idea for what we can feature on here if our weather blog to keep you coming back. Once again, email me again right here at wreg.austin.onic at wreg.com. And again, welcome to everybody for tuning in at just about seven minutes past eight o'clock on Saturday morning. If you are just joining us, again, please drop your location and wherever you're uh, transmitting, wherever you're netcasting, watching from. And also, if you have any weather reports from around the area. Rain gauges, that'd be kind of cool to give us an update on that. If you've got one of those weather stations, let us know more about what's looking like at your property or wherever you may happen to be this morning. So location and weather reports, temperature, wind speed, all that type of stuff. We'd love to be able to see more about what's going on out there. And we'll have your complete forecast, including that possibility of winter weather coming our way into the next couple of days. So stick around for more on that. Again, forecast in a nutshell in the blue bar and also here again through the rest of the day very much on the mild side, but drizzle and clouds will be the rule for today. Also a little bit on the breezy side with winds out of the south for most of the day at about 13, 15, 17, anywhere between about 10 and 20 miles per hour through today. Now tonight, we'll be seeing an end of the rainfall as drier air starts to work its way on through. Winds will be switching to the northeast about dinner time and around sunset, so we will see again some less chances of rainfall as we go into very early tomorrow morning, but we'll talk more about that that and the entire forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Thanks to everybody for joining us from this morning all and around the Mid-South area. Uh, thanks to the reports. Uh, Pensacola, Florida. Wow, haven't been there in a while. Hester Connor, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for joining us. J.K. McCandless Crawford, Ordinary Rain, Cordova, Tennessee. Nice, good, ordinary rainfall. That sounds pretty good. Good morning to everybody else for checking in from around the Mid-South area for now. Let's take a look at some of the cameras out around the area from the National Park Service. A little bit farther to the east, the Potomac River and the area around our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Mostly clear for today, a little hazy, and a few clouds and a few jet contrails drifting on through. But beyond that, we have not much of anything there. From Mount Washington, New Hampshire, Hampshire, a little farther north of D.C., snow-covered terrace. Some of the worst weather in the United States happens right here. If you'd like to see more about this, you can go to Twitter and follow MWOBS, OBS, Mount, weather, uh, Mount Washington Observatory. Incredible to see the type of weather they have here. 200-plus mile-per-hour winds, huge amounts of snow and ice. Really cool to take a look at this, and we'll feature this again throughout the rest of the next few weeks, so kind of neat to see there. Welcoming back Rhodes College, the weather webcam have been removed from the weather underground system for a while and there was a pretty good uproar to keep them so nice to see the webcam from Rhodes College back once again and into and around the rest of the Mid-South. Solid overcast pretty much and plenty of rain in central Memphis. From our Weatherbug camera network around the area of Clarksdale, Mississippi, wet roadways, wet trees and lawns in and around the area of Heidelberg Elementary in Clarksdale for this morning. For live view of I-240 and Poplar. Again, traffic moving along in all directions, but you notice a bit of a spray being kicked up by the wheels this morning. There is just enough rain out there to really soak things down. So if you are traveling, slower is going to be better. 
safe and slower to be on the safe side. The faster you go, the more water gets between your tire and the roadway surface, and the more water that gets down there because you're going too fast can lead to something called hydroplaning, and that if you've never had it happen before, it's just like driving on ice. No, I'm not kidding about that. So again, slowing down today will be a very good idea to save lives and to save you a lot of boring conversations with your insurance agent. So again, something to think about on that. Current conditions around I-40 and Whitten Road. Rain on the camera lens from our transmitter tower camera looking off to the southwest. And again, lots of rain out there for this morning into and around the area. From I-240 and Airways, travel in and around Memphis International Airport while it's soggy on the ground. We're not showing anything in the way of delays at this time, according to the FAA. And likewise, not showing any major delays throughout the continental United States at major and connecting airports. If you'd like this information on your computer, go to weather, our weather page at wreg.com slash weather, or you can get it direct from the source at fly.faa.gov for more information. Storm Tracker 3S radar just past 8 o'clock in the morning. Showers, waves of them moving on through much of Shelby County and Memphis. And we'll continue again to see the potential for more of those areas of showers across much of the Mid-South, especially into and around parts of eastern Arkansas. We're getting a lot more scattered showers from the boot heel down to about I-40 at this point in time. So more chances of rainfall throughout the rest of the morning. Now most of this is going to lift its way east and across the Mississippi River into West Tennessee. So anything around I-55 going to be soaked down pretty well pretty soon. All the way up into southeast Missouri and all the way down to roughly about Interstate 40 for this morning. So that's going to be the heaviest rain in the next couple of hours. But we're expecting even more rain rainfall to move its way into the Mid-South as we go throughout the rest of the morning. So be prepared for more rain. We're not expecting any frozen precipitation today, too warm for anything like that. And we're not seeing anything in the way of thunderstorms, definitely no severe weather. So that's always good news to talk about. So not major problems seen uh, with that at this point, but we will continue to see more of these chances of showers out there. East of the Mississippi River into West Tennessee, Williston, Somerville, Oakland, Fayette County, and east into around Hardeman County, south of Jackson and I-40, light scattered showers, and likewise around Holly Springs, Marshall County, northern areas of Lafayette County, right around the reservoir, north of Oxford. That's the heaviest showers that we have so far in and around this area. So we're not seeing anything the way of very heavy amounts of rainfall, but this is enough to slow things down and to make things dangerous on the roadway. So again, please keep that in mind if you're going to be heading out the door pretty soon. All right, let's run the numbers and show you what we've got going on throughout the rest of the day. Late this morning, again, temperatures way above freezing, so no chance of anything involving frozen precipitation for right now, and that goes right on into this afternoon. Peak heating time of the day, mid to upper 50s, maybe a few temperatures close to 60 degrees down into northern Mississippi, but kind of doubtful on that. Mainly mid to upper 50s is going to be the main thing out there. Now, this is where it kind of turns a little bit cooler into the rest of the day. Winds, notice the moving lines here. They're up from the bottom of the screen heading toward the top. That's winds out of the south heading back toward the north. And then back here, you've got winds coming in from the opposite direction. So we've got a front that's going to be dropping its way through the area, and that's going to turn our winds around. And more importantly, it's going to bring us in some drier air. So we're going to be seeing less chances of rainfall as we go into the rest of the area for later on tonight. Let's see, Grady Bennett, current temperature 52 degrees and dry at the moment. Okay, good to know on that. Thank you very much. Phyllis McCash, in Wyoming, snow coming in. Uh, where in Wyoming, if you're located in around uh, Cheyenne, say hello to uh, meteorologist Ryan McCammon, who works for the uh, Wyoming state government out that direction. Good friend of mine from KU. Uh, thanks a lot for stopping on through there. Patsy Ann Cooper, 48, uh, light rain in Oxford, Mississippi. Thank you very much uh, for checking in there. Rain in Campbell, Ohio. Thanks for checking in from slightly outside the area from Monica Russell. And thank you very much for everybody else. Keith Cuts, hope I'm saying that right. Light rain in Troy and drizzle in West Memphis. Karen Beshires McAteer, hope I'm saying that one correctly. You think with a name like Onik, I would know better on names like that. Rest of the evening, again, through News Channel 3 at 10, a lot milder south of that front, a little bit cooler air and drier as we go into very early tomorrow morning. So by daybreak tomorrow, the chillier air will be back on through at least briefly. 
but then we'll see again a, an improvement on the conditions out there as we go into tomorrow. So the rain today, yes. Early tomorrow, yes. But then we clear things out as the chances of rain leave us down toward the south and east. Now, this is just for, again, about the next 36 hours or so. Let's jump into the future, what everybody's been looking for and wondering about as we go into around the end of the week and the end of the month, for that matter. New storm coming on through. We've been talking about this for the last several days as long as the idea of some people in the net casting community about 300 hours in advance of a storm system moving on through and saying we're going to get this much snow and this much ice and blah 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 again a little bit too much on the way out ahead of the forecast to tell with any certainty these type of storm systems if you've never tried winter weather forecasting i highly urge you to give it a shot and i'm not talking about wish casting ahead of time i'm saying look at the computer models all of them out there and they are available to to you for free on many different websites. If you've never tried winter weather forecasting before, I urge you to give it a try for yourself because it is a humbling experience to say the least. And this right here, not shy to say that this is not my favorite uh, weather season to forecast in because there are just so many things that can change, not the least of which is again higher up in the atmosphere from the surface to several thousand feet up. If you just get a little bit of warm air at the wrong altitude, it'll totally change the forecast down toward the surface. So what are we looking for? Toward Thursday afternoon, milder temperatures in the green, colder temperatures, again, right about to below freezing in the blue. And you'll be able to see that drop on through the area as we go into around Thursday afternoon and evening. So the cold air is gonna be arriving later on this week, preceding the possibility of anything involving the precipitation changing over. Now, again, in the light blue, again, purple, white to snowfall potential up here, white to purple, that's where we see, again, the potential of that just barely making its way into the area around the uh, Missouri-Arkansas state line and back across into the Tennessee-Kentucky state line. This bullseye that you see here and another one's going to pop up over here toward Middle Tennessee as we go into Friday morning. That is the potential of maybe some frozen and or freezing precipitation coming on through. So again, snowfall potential here and the possibility of something, again, a little bit more uh, potentially dangerous here with sleet and snow. Now here's the thing, again, what we're looking at in the way of snow from this particular computer model, and this is just one of about a dozen that we use to forecast stuff, especially in the long range nature, snow potential stays fairly well to our north from southwest Missouri all the way over into eastern Kentucky and doesn't go much further south than the boot heel. So already that's one strike against us at this time. Cold air remains in place as that moves on through and mixes with that moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. This is where we start to see again the potential for again maybe something that we really need to start paying attention to with signs like this out there showing freezing rain, sleet, or a mixture of different types of combination. Now, this is not showing, again, total amounts. Way too early for that. But once again, the signs are there that we are going to be getting something in the form of precipitation by very early Groundhog Day, February 2nd. That's going to be the main thing we're going to be watching for into the course of the next several days. These numbers, again, here and on this forecast will change as we go throughout the next few days. So you, again, got to stay updated as to what's going on. The forecast here that you're going to see on the 7 to 10 day forecast will not be the same as we get into the end of the week. You've got to stay updated on stuff like this. So again, stay tuned for more about that one for right now. Very wet, yard flooded, main Arkansas, Rebecca A. Bagwell, thank you very much uh, for tuning on in. Marie C. Brent, hope it's warm today. Well, if mid to upper 50s are your idea of warm, then yeah, I'd say it's going to be decently mild out there considering. Normal highs for this time of the year are back in the mid to upper 40s to lower 50s, so this is going to be just a little bit above normal, so that'll keep everything just the form of rainfall out there, so decently mild out across much of the area. Becky Gwynn from South Haven, Mississippi, thanks a lot for tuning in uh, for this morning out into the area for right now, and everybody else who's tuning in uh, from around the Mid-South. Again, if you want to drop your location and your weather reports, if you've got a temperature report out there, let us know what the numbers are like in your location. We'll pass them along. 56 degrees, again, a little cooler, but not by much tomorrow. 
We'll be seeing again that cold air arriving afterwards. So pretty chilly for Monday as the kids head back to the school bus stop, but at least it'll be dry and temperatures on Monday will be just below normal instead of above normal as we get into the rest of the forecast there. Now for the rest of the week, we warm back up again, approaching the end of January, the beginning of February. The month's almost over with. Where has the time gone? Mid 50s for Thursday and then chances of rainfall pretty good at this time, but those chances of rain affected by that cold air arriving late Thursday, early Friday, so it is possible somewhere on furry fake forecaster day that we could see the possibility of some rain, sleet, freezing rain, snow mixture, something possible, but again, the chances are not great and widespread for the area for now, but we will be watching that again to make certain you're up to date with what's going on. Now, for those of you who are looking for a true American holiday weather-wise to celebrate, may I recommend Friday or Monday, February 5th, National Weather Person. Day. Just throwing it out there for you if you want to mark that down on your calendar. Maybe send us a celebratory tweet or something like that. But that'll be Monday, the 5th of February, a day to celebrate meteorology and the forecasters out there that bring you the weather information, whether it's National Weather Service, the researchers out there across the country at FedEx. Great bunch of people there, uh, including Eric Proceus, head of MemphisWeather.net, and everybody else out across the Mid-South and beyond who works to bring you the weather information and tries to study the app atmosphere as well. So National Weather Person's Day, great day for that. A little bit on the cool side though, temperatures back in the lower 40s. And again, this right here is going to be the next weather maker we're going to be concerned with. So keep it tuned to the weather experts and we'll keep you updated on what we may be seeing out across much of the Mid-South area. Now, speaking of severe weather, mentioned this a few days ago, the National Weather Service will be teaching Skywarn Spotter training courses from D. Sager 001. Having attended this training, I highly recommend it for everyone. You don't have to become an active spotter. What you learn is valuable for personal use, and that's a very good point. So if you'd like to know more about that, stick around. We'll have more on that in just a little bit. Louis Haskett from areas around I-555 around northeast Arkansas. Only one lane open and farm equipment up there, urging some caution out there on the roadways from earlier this week. And from James R. Gulledge in and around Humboldt, Plenty of sunshine a couple of days ago and 61, the temperature. Very nice out there. If you've got pictures you'd like us to feature on these netcasts, please send them along. Aonic underscore WRIG3 on Twitter. Aonic no underscore necessary WRIG3 on Instagram. And Austin Onic WRIG on Facebook if you'd like to join me for more information on that one for right now. Nancy Barnett, Cleveland, hot coffee in Senatobia. Thank you very much. I'm already up to my third pitcher or carafe or whatever that is for right now. Again, this is what we see again for the rest of the weekend, the coffee and a lot of weather out there. Radio forecast, if you can't tune us in on the computer or watch us on TV because you're traveling, dial us up on the radio. My forecast on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. And of course, we'll keep you updated on social media throughout the course of the rest of the weekend. Upcoming Skywarn Spotter Talks from the National Weather Service, your opportunity to learn more about how to get ready for severe weather, free, paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars, Great way to get informed, a great way to get everybody in the community ready for severe weather. National Weather Service teaches you what to look for when it comes time for severe weather. What you experience, what you see across the Mid-South, called into the National Weather Service, called, emailed, amateur radio operator, uh, casted into that area. That's what can save lives. Your information could help save someone's life down the line. So again, a great opportunity to learn more about what goes on with this. The first four meetings coming up, Tuesday, February 13th in Sumner, Mississippi, Wynn, Arkansas a week later on the 20th, two days later at Lexington, Tennessee, February 22nd, and March the 1st around Trenton, Tennessee. Where's the one for Memphis and Shelby County? Not on this display yet, but it will be in the next several weeks, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 again for that, and we'll keep you updated on that as well. That'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Thanks a lot to everybody for joining us this morning for all the weather reports. We'll, of course, have more forecast details throughout the rest of the day. Your seven-day forecast updated and available here at WREG.com slash weather, and, of course, all be on throughout the rest of the weekend. News Channel 3 at 5, 6, and 10 later on tonight, and, of course, tomorrow morning 
going on daybreak. And of course, if you need to contact me, email address here at austin.onic at wreg.com. Thanks again to everybody for tuning in. Really appreciate you watching and spread the word around. You can post our netcast around to let people know more about what's going on in the Mid-South. Would love for you to do that. Stick around for more throughout the rest of the weekend with yours truly on News Channel 3. Stay safe out there throughout the rest of the weekend. More coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 5.